Hello and welcome to today's discussion on what do auditors need. My name is Marcus and I'm joined by Isabel Kidd, the head of SA Global Assurance Learning, who will talk to us about the auditor pathway. Welcome Isabel. Thanks Marcus. Uh, perhaps you can start by talking to us a little bit about the auditor career path. It's an interesting journey and there's some really interesting research being put out by the Institute of Internal Auditors uh, two years ago in 2016 and they interviewed 14,500 auditors uh, from 166 countries, which is a really interesting longitudinal survey of auditors. What they found was very interesting that most auditors begin their auditor journey as an internal auditor, generally working in an organisation. What the research then found was that once they hit 39, they then start to undertake formal training as an auditor at a much higher rate. So basically, they begin to go and seek formal training to recognise their skill as an auditor. What we then know is that by the time in these internal auditors are in their 40s, double that number have gone and sought external accreditation approval as an auditor. So what that also really indicates is that they're on a trajectory to look at a more serious pathway into becoming an auditor. And recognition of the skills that you need to become an auditor, generally that means going and attending formal training. And we can see that the average auditor has done around 40 hours of accredited training as an auditor. So definitely the older internal auditors become in their organisation, the more likely they are to seek training. And that's particularly interesting because you'd think at first glance they're less likely to need to do formal training. But actually what they're really doing, I can deduct from this research, is that they are formalising their career path to become a full-time auditor. Great, that's really interesting. So tell us, how does one become an accredited auditor? There's two pathways that Exemplar Global offer to become an accredited auditor. One is qualification-based and one is competency-based. Now, the main difference for those two pathways is that the auditor really is based on the auditor's um, experience and skills and the number of audits they've done. So the more experienced auditors are more likely to just do competency-based where they undertake formal training, an Exemplar Global accredited course with SAR Global, for example, then they would actually register with Exemplar Global as a, an auditor and actually for the competency-based scheme, they are observed and their skills and knowledge uh, are assessed during an actual audit. And that's ideal. Why would an auditor choose the competency-based pathway? They would choose that because they already have a lot of the skills and knowledge. The second pathway, which is a very popular pathway also, is the qualification-based. But for this, the auditors must nominate the number of hours and audits that they've done. That varies based on the management system scheme that they're registering with Exemplar Global for. For both schemes, qualification-based and competency, they have to complete a recognised Exemplar Global audit course with an approved training provider. So maybe you can tell us some of the main barriers auditors have to access training? Yeah, there's three main uh, barriers that we've identified with audited clients, um, which are cost, time and access. So for cost, we have found that a quarter of all auditors are paying for their own learning, and that can be quite an expensive outlay for an auditor who is maybe a full-time employee or relying on contracts for income. The second contributing factor would be time. So most auditors are very time poor they are out there auditing. So they tend to not have a lot of time to dedicate two or to three or five days to doing the formal audit course. The third issue we've found is access. So being able to access training at, their, at a convenient time in a flexible way is really critical for auditors. So if they're traveling, then things like an e-learning option might be the best option or a blended learning, so they may do one part of a course, if it's a new scheme they're not that familiar with, they may tend to do that as an instructor-led face-to-face course, and that might take two days out of their busy audit schedule, or they might, and they might then choose to do e-learning for the lead auditor component, or for another audit stream that they're particularly competent in. So really having that flexibility is really critical. So how can auditors add value? There's many ways auditors can add value. Uh, Exemplar Global found in some research in 2016 that organisations who have good auditors tend to become leader and have better EBITDA 
results for their on the financial side. Basically, auditors are already bringing a wealth of experience because of the required skills and knowledge that they are expected to have to become an accredited approved auditor. So they are bringing that wealth of industry knowledge and experience to every audit that they contribute to. And the fact that most auditors are older, which we'll discuss shortly, what this means is that auditors being older tend to bring a lot of industry experience to each audit that they undertake. Great. So can you tell us some of the professional development requirements for auditors? All auditor schemes have a number of requirements for professional de development and proving currency of competence as an auditor. So just because someone's become an auditor does not mean that in five years' time they'll still have currency of competence as an auditor. So it's essential that they can demonstrate their professional development. This can be through ways as varied as either attending a course is obvious, an obvious one, but it can also be attending industry functions, sessions, events, conferences, writing white papers, contributing to conferences and events, etc. It's also really important that auditors keep up their currency with the actual certification requirements that may change over time and particular schemes. A lot of industry clients that an auditor may audit will also have varying legislative requirements and maybe customer requirements or supply chain requirements that may change. That's really critical, particularly in the food area, to keep abreast of those industry uh, updates and changes. Could you tell us some of the career opportunities for auditors? There's a lot of very good opportunities for auditors at the moment in the, in the sector. We have an ageing uh, auditor workforce, so we know the a average age of auditor is between 46 and 55, and that was documented by Exemplar Global in 2016. We also know for some schemes that age is much higher. Aerospace, for example, the average auditor age is 65, and many auditors are in their 70s. Um, and we have vast opportunities for aerospace auditors and an insufficient labour workforce to actually undertake those audits. There are other sectors with uh, niche areas, for instance, now that ISO standards have been harmonised with the high-level annexure, there's a great potential for auditors to become integrated management systems auditors. So what that means is an auditor, for example, who audits in 9001 can also, if they can demonstrate skills and knowledge and do the right training and get experience as an auditor, also audit against 14001 for environment possibly 45,001, the new OHS standard that's just been launched. Uh, 27,001 Information Security is another integrated management systems audit that can also be done by quality system auditors um, as a career path. Not saying that a 27,001 auditor can actually audit any of the other schemes, but given that the high level structure of the ISO standards is the same now, it gives a great opportunity for auditors to become integrated management system auditors. The other area I'd probably suggest is the food industry. We have an evolving number of food standards and the Global Food Safety Initiative, there's a number of new standards and all of the global standards are being updated. So a lot of customer requirements will be changing in the supply chain for food. So I'd say there's a lot of opportunities. Never been a better time to become an auditor. I believe that's all the time that we have. Well, thank you so much for that insightful discussion. If you'd like to get in contact with us, please visit www.saiglobal.com.